Hello, gentlemen, and good morning. I hope you're all doing very good this lovely and cold morning. I see people are starting to join. OK, so let me just briefly um, introduce myself. My name is Omar, and I'm the application engineer at Radiocrafts. And today, I'll have the pleasure of presenting to you this webinar about one of the most commonly used radio standards and radiographs most sold protocol of all time, EMBUS. But uh, don't worry, uh, today's webinar is intended to be light and brief, so I will not uh, go into detail about the EMBUS standard. We will rather just um, speak about what radiographs has to offer when it comes to EMBUS. I can see that uh, people are starting to join and uh, many familiar names. Good morning, guys. I didn't miss uh, anything yet. I was just uh, starting, introducing the webinar and myself. Okay, so let's make this even more exciting. Um, do you know why this webinar is very important? Um, well, as you might already know, Radiographs is an active participant and contributor to the standardization and development of wireless embers. Uh, and that's not it. But actually, uh, Peter Martin, our managing director, represents Norway in uh, CEN TC294, which is the standardization body responsible for embers. And he's also an expert in uh, working groups four, five, and six, in addition to being an active uh, OMS, uh, which is Open Metering System Specification Work and also member of the WISE Alliance Committee. So, in the spirit of Christmas, and despite him being very busy, I managed to get him to join us today and do and help me actually with part of the Q&A uh, session at the end of the webinar. So, stay tuned and prepare your questions. You can um, uh, type your questions in the chat window if you don't want to forget them, and uh, we will try as best as we can to answer them at the end of the webinar. We will try to keep the webinar uh, short, around 30 minutes, and to leave an additional 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for the Q&A session. So please feel free to leave your uh, uh, questions in the chat window. And uh, also don't worry about taking notes now, because this webinar, uh, a recorded version of it, will be available online for you to check afterwards. And in general, if you have any more questions, you can always reach us at support at radiocrafts.com if you have any more technical questions. All right, so now I think everyone's here, so let's get to it. So what are we going to speak about today? As you can see from the pictures, it's meters and it's embers. We will speak about what embers is and why is it um, very uh, important and not like other IoT metering solutions. What's so special about Embus? Uh, what are the best use cases of wireless Embus? And most importantly, what does Radiographs have to offer when it comes to wireless Embus solutions? What are our different solutions and what kind of applications do they suit the best? And then we can also speak about our customization uh, uh, products when it comes to Embus. Okay, so very briefly, uh, Wireless Embus is based on the European standard, EN 13757. It, has, uh, it was designed to have two key considerations, which are security and low power consumption, to meet the demanding meter market requirements. Uh, Embus protocol can operate in most license-free frequency bands, which makes it a suitable fit for most uh, markets around the world. All these characteristics makes Embus an ideal solution for metering applications. And whenever you get an RF module from Radiocrafts uh, with Embus, you have to know that it always is compatible with the latest additions to the standard as we take an active part, as we spoke before, in the standardization process in both CEN and OMS. So 
So in very simple terms, this is how a simple utility metering architecture looks like. You have some sort of, a, let's say a house, for example, which has an electricity meter, gas meter, and water meter, which send their billing information to a gateway collector, which then relays that information to the utility provider. And the MS protocol takes, takes part in only the meter and the gateway or collector part. Okay, so what are the requirements of EMBIS? What is expected from such a protocol? Well, uh, as we said before, since it is optimized for reading billing information wirelessly from utility meters, it is expected to provide a number of things, such as high levels of, sec of security, as such sensitive information should not fall into the wrong hands or be uh, altered or tapered with. That's why EMBIS supports AES-128 encryption. We have also reliability. Uh, the protocol has to be very reliable as wrong or missing information can cause the utility provider to make wrong decisions. And then you also have battery lifetime because as you might imagine, some of these meters can be installed in hard to reach places. So frequent battery exchange procedures can be very uh, costly. Another important aspect of the Wallace Embus protocol is that it should be versatile to fit various use cases. That's why the user has to have some sort of freedom uh, in uh, modifying his parameters in network parameters. That's why with Embus, the user can modify some parameters such as the operating frequency, the modes, the output power, which then leads to power consumption, the encryption, and so on. So it is quite a versatile uh, protocol designed for metering but also still it, uh, the user can also modify some of the parameters himself. So you might ask yourself, what's so special about Embus since there are probably tens of other LP1 and IoT um, uh, networks out there. What makes Embus very special? Well, um, Embus is relatively simple, which means it's a simple protocol, which means it has less costs, easier to install, it's easier to maintain. Uh, Embus uses a star network, and star means it's simple architecture. There is no mesh complexity. Uh, you can add option, uh, optional um, repeaters, but it's not a mesh, so it's quite simple. Uh, Embus also operates in the sub one gigahertz range, which means you have better range, less interference, uh, more uh, wall penetration. Embus also does not use IP packets, which means the stack is kept always relatively simple compared to other protocols. And because of all this, and especially because of its simplicity, um, multiple suppliers are available in the field. So there's always much competition. Here we can see a summary a summary table of the most commonly used Embus modes. It might seem like a lot, but once you give it a second look, it starts making more sense. For example, we can see that there are four main modes, uh, S, T, C, and N. And these are not just letters, they actually refer to a keyword in the mode. For example, um, if you start downwards, uh, the N mode, it's N stands for narrowband. In the C uh, mode, in the middle, the C stands for compact, and so on. So that's quite intuitive. But then you have also each no mode is divided into two. One is for unidirectional mode, and two is for the bidirectional mode. Then there are smaller differences, and they're actually also very easy to know. For example, uh, narrowband is designed to have longer range, 
therefore it makes sense that it operates in the 169 megahertz. Then the compact mode in the middle, it's also quite intuitive because it implements um, a more efficient coding scheme. That's why you can compact more payload data in the embus frame. So that's why, hence the name being compact. As opposed, for example, to the T mode, which is not as compact and therefore it implements uh, three of six coding and the effective data rate is 67 kilobits per second rather than the Armin kilobits per second specified. So you can see that um, after a second look, it's not, uh, not confusing. It's rather quite intuitive. And that was just a summary of the modes used by EMPS. All right, as promised, we'll not dive into the EMPS uh, specifications a lot, but just very briefly, the EMBUS protocol is uh, designed for battery-operated devices, which means power consumption must always be kept minimum. So I'd just like to explain to you briefly how that happens. Um, so in a typical scenario, um, the slave is always initiating the communication, which means the slave device attached to the meter will always start the communication. And the master, which is on the gateway or collector side, must then transmit its downlink if needed, if you are using bi-directional mode, only within a short time window, which is, for example, about two to three milliseconds in the T mode. So now we said that the slave initiated and then the gateway might reply if you're using bidirectional. So after one such ping pong sequence like that, the slave will then have a pause and enter sleep mode for two to five seconds before it again does a new transmission and the gateway replies and so on. So using this scheme, Embus protocol manages to achieve very low battery consumption. And actually about how the gateway and or concentrator replies back uh, downlink, we have uh, Radiocrafts has some patented technology on how the gateway manages this timing and manages to reply in that very short time window. So as we already spoke, um, Embus is um, very much wild, uh, widely used in uh, the metering market, but because of its simplicity and its um, robustness and reliability, security, low power consumption, all these are very uh, attractive uh, characteristics. So it has also been adopted in wireless sensor networks, smart cities, and in general industrial use. Okay, now the fun part. Finish the theory, and now the practical part. So what does Radiocraft actually offer with Envis? So we can divide it in many ways, but um, to keep it simple, we can start by the very top level. So Radiocrafts can offer either uh, modems or pulse counter modules or sensor modules. But let's take it one by one. So for the modem, it's a complete radio transceiver offered by Radiocrafts. It supports two-way communications, but of course it requires a host MCU since it's only the modem. It's configured by UART interface and this diagram on the right-hand side just gives a very um, a brief overview of how it would look like. So you have the module on the right-hand side configured uh, with uh, via UART from the MCU, which is connected then to the sensor or meter. So this modem actually the modem has all the functions embedded inside it. So the radio modem has the set frequency, the channels, data rate, output power. It also supports timing control to ensure uh, on-time uh, messages. We also have the patented technology we spoke about to ensure timely response and downlink message from the gateway. The module also does the encryption and authentication. So basically everything is done by the module inside. And this we offer it in MBUS3, MBUS4 and WAS. Okay, so one offering was the modem, and we spoke about that. Now, the second thing is Embus Pulse Counter MPC modules. 
So what's new about that? Well, unlike the modems, the MPC does not need an external MCU. It can work automatically as an autonomous slave unit. So it has a pulse counter, so it can be attached to any mechanical meter that's used forward or reverse flow that outputs pulses. And this MPC module for Medicraft is designed to actually count these pulses automatically without the need of any external, uh, without the help of any external MCU. So the module is designed to be in sleep mode, usually just counting the pulses to accumulate the usage data. Then at a certain time and value, the module wakes up to transmit the data. And the module can transmit that data to any standard MBUS receiver. Uh, the module itself, it builds the message, encrypts it, and also sends the RF transmission. So the uh, module does everything by itself. So as a pulse counter module, it can be used with any pulse, uh, any meter, the pulse output. Let it be a water meter, electricity, or gas. And we offer MPC modules over the RC1140 platform, 1170, 80, and 1701 high power. Each, of course, with its uh, own uh, frequency band support, which we'll speak also about that more in more detail a bit later. Okay, so we spoke about the modem, which is the transceiver. We spoke about the MPC, which is the modules which are counting the pulse, pulse counter modules. Now, the third type of modules that radiographs offer is the MBUS sensor modules, MSM. So, that just as the pulse counter, this kind of module is also designed to, to do a certain task. So, it's equipped with an application to read and report sensor data over MBUS network. So this can be connected to sensors. It can be uh, timer-based or event-based. For example, um, uh, the module can be designed can be set to uh, report uh, uplink data after a certain timer value or after the uh, measured uh, parameter exceeds a certain threshold value. For example, temperature exceeds um, 60 or whatever. The module again is usually in sleep mode and only wakes up to read sensor data and report it. Uh, since we do the whole MSM module, so we have support for uh, environmental accelerometer and voltage sensors. Uh, this can be done over UART, I2C, SPI, or digital input output. And you can also um, enable, disable, uh, enable or disable the uh, sensor support easily uh, via UART. So we uh, deliver the module with. Uh, set of default sensors supported. For example, we have two kinds of temperature sensors. We have an ADC, some GPIO sensors, and an accelerometer. And of course, for certain projects, uh, Radiographs can always add support for new sensors on demand. So MPC and MSM modules can be supported on a variety of platforms, which we will again also speak about very soon. Yes, that slide, the summary slide. So as you can see, um, here I just want to give you a very um, general overview of the different offerings of Radiographs when it comes to MBUS. So uh, we spoke about the modems, the, uh, the MPC, the pulse counter, and the MSM, the sensor interface modules. Now we can address the same point, but from a different angle. We can speak about them from the protocol side. So for MBUS3, uh, Radiograph supports uh, 433 MHz, 865, 868, and modes STNC. And it's, of course, optimized for low battery uh, consumption. Uh, 433, which is used, I think, the Middle East mostly, and 865 in India, and 868 in Europe. Then MBUS4 is only supported on 169 megahertz for narrowband transmissions. This makes it more resilient, since it's uh, noise resilient, since it's uh, narrowband. Uh, as discussed, it, it uses mode C. 
optimized for long range and thick walls penetration, and it's optimal for hard to reach places. Uh, MPC1 and MSM, they can be supported in, all, supported in all bands, and MPC is optimized for pulse counting, MSM for sensor interface modules. Then we have WISE, uh, which is kind of one of the, another flavor for MBUS4 on, on 69 megahertz. Mode N, it supports uh, over the air firmware updates, low power consumption, and also priority frames uh, for uplink uh, uh, priority alarms. And then lastly, if you want to look at it from the product number angle, then here this slide, we can see that at 169, we have the 1701 options, either for WISE or MS4. We have also the very high power MS4. Um, if you want to check 433 megahertz, you have the RC1140 MS3. For A65 and in India, uh, channels in India, we have the also 17, uh, 1170 and 1170 high power MBS3. For the pulse counting module, um, all bands are supported. And for 868, we have RC 1180 MBS3 and RC 1180 high power MBS3. And of course, um, more details about the part numbers and which modes and which uh, uh frequencies are supported are available on, on our uh, website on our web page and you can also contact sales at readycrafts.com for more information about that so it doesn't actually stop here readycrafts also offers customized modules this always uh, depends on the specific customer needs but it's usually variants of the mpc1 or the msm uh, Radiographs can always add uh, interface interface additions such as near field communications or UART. Can add uh, uh, real time clocks for real time keeping, uh, EEPROM to store uh, metering values in non volatile memory. Can also add memory for over the air firmware updates, for example, and so on, so on, so on. And actually, one of our big uh, projects, uh, one of our big customized modules projects is the water meter projects based on the WISE protocol. For that particular project, we added uh, a list of uh, new features which made the project possible, uh, such as the NFC interface, uh, the real time clock, as discussed before, the radio transmission scheduler, power management to support very long uh, battery lifetimes, firmware downloads, events logging, and so on. So the summary is that with Radiographs, you can always customize the module to fit the specific project needs. And it's never rigid. It's never um, just one module and nothing more can happen. But there is always room for more and always options for more. All right, I hope I managed to keep that uh, brief. Uh, in summary, um, I just wanted to tell you about our status as a world leader MBUS provider, uh, the support for a wide uh, variety of modules that we have um, to give you uh, an overview of our MBUS offerings, either the modems, the MPC or the MSM, to give you an overview of the frequencies we support, the MBUS modes we support, and also to tell you that, tell you know that uh, we have the option for also customized solutions and uh, customized offerings. So I think that's it for me. Um, if you want to have more information, you can also visit our webpage. You can check our, our document library to get more uh, documentation regarding Embus. Always check your nearest uh, distributor to order a development kit if you want to test Embus yourself. Um, 
And of course, you can always have a look at our um, supporting PC tools, which uh, work with the development kit. And you can contact us at support or sales or order. And now you are free to ask any questions you might have. Let me check the chat window. All right, so uh, now I think um, I finished my part. So if you might have any questions, please uh, let us know. I see that Magnus, Magnus from Sweden. Uh, good morning, Magnus. Uh, he's um, saying, as I see it, pros for us embassies that many meters are available that has it, but on the constant store topology, which in buildings can be problematic for range and thick walls. My experience on that. It's a, it's a valid point. Um, uh, I can answer, but I think I would prefer to have Peter Martin answer you. So, uh, good morning, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning, uh, Omar, and uh, all the rest of you joining this uh, webinar. Uh, yes, a good, uh, good question. Um, as well as Ambus is, um, is a star topology. Uh, as Omar also mentioned, you, you may add repeaters. Of course, that's that can also be a challenge when it comes to uh, to powering repeaters and so on in um, in a building. Um, but um, that is also partly the reason why we developed the wireless embus on 169 megahertz. So this really comes from the gas meter and the water meter industry. Uh, because these meters are typically installed, say, down in basements or even in pits underground. So you need a really good uh, radio technology. So, um, so that's where the 169 megahertz comes in, which has uh, very much better penetration into buildings than uh, what we, we get at 868 megahertz, for example. And in addition to that, 169 megahertz um, is a narrowband technology that is down to 12.5 kilohertz channels, giving you very good uh, sensitivity in, uh, in the receivers. And you may also transmit with up to 27 dBm of output power, which is also much more than you can do on, on 868. So uh, all in all, uh, 169 megahertz is a very good uh, solution for uh, for penetrating into buildings. So this is now widely used, uh, say in uh, in France and Italy, for their gas metering networks, uh, and also a lot for water metering. As an example, we are supplying uh, radio modules for water meters being installed in in Paris. So a very <laughs> urban dense environment with meters uh, down in pits and in basements but uh, but still we have very very good performance so i hope that answers your question magnus that was very helpful peter thank you and there's also another question from peter i'm not sure if you can see it it's three yes uh, i can see it it's marked uh, private but uh, mm -hmm. i think we can can still answer it here in the public because it's quite uh, general about um, mm -hmm. uh, would embus be usable for temperature monitoring of uh, refrigerators where every 10 minutes the temperature sensor sends data uh, yes indeed so uh, this is uh, i would say a very typical application for for embus uh, at least when embus are used for for sensors so, and uh, yeah, we, we have customers already doing uh, similar things like that. And uh, uh, in this case, you could, you could choose to use the, the modem module and your own um, microcontroller reading the sensor in case you wanted to do some uh, 
some calculations to uh, to convert say from a voltage in into a uh, temperature in degrees for example or you could uh, connect the uh, temperature sensor directly to an uh, MSM uh, module and we also specified some temperature sensors that we are already supporting directly in in the module so yeah, and even transmitting every 10 minutes, uh, because the amount of data is, is very low, it will be a very, very short transmission. So you could uh, still have very good battery lifetimes uh, doing that. And by that, I mean 10 years or, or even more, of course, depending on the size of the battery, but with a normal, say, AA cell. So yes, and... Uh, if you want to go further on this, you can also contact us and we can help you with even more details. True. Uh, thanks a lot, Peter uh, Martin. That was very helpful. Um, okay, guys, so as we mentioned, uh, a recording of the webinar will be available um, on our website shortly for you to review it again. And remember, you can always contact us at support at radiocrafts.com or order or sales. Okay, so uh, I hope that was um, a bit informative and a bit fun. We try to keep it short and brief. And um, thank you all for joining. And we hope to speak to you again very soon. Uh, till then, have a lovely Christmas.